Well, here you can see the most successful energy conversion system of our planet. Yes, I'm talking about plants. They have mastered the ability to harvest the energy of sunlight and use it to convert carbon dioxide into vital chemicals that now sustain life on Earth. This process, known as photosynthesis, has been crafted over billions of years of evolution. But what if we could also learn this? I'm working in the field of artificial photosynthesis where this is exactly what we are trying to achieve. Our ultimate aim is to design human-made materials able to harvest the energy of light and use it to produce a useful chemical on demand. Let me give you my perspective. Our society is strongly dependent on fossil fuels. We use them as a source to generate electricity and as a resource to feed our chemical industry. But in light of the challenges posed by climate change, we have to reduce this reliance and explore renewable resources. While the energy the sun provides to our planet is the most vast and equally distributed source of renewable energy. A good example here are solar cells. Just look how quickly they've changed the landscape of the energy sector in the last 15, 20 years. But Solar cells only allow for a very specific energy conversion from light to electricity. And while it's of course great to have access to zero emission charging and power, we also need to think of the other economic sectors that still heavily rely on fossil fuels. Our transportation means, for example, cars and planes are still dependent on petroleum, chemical industry products, Petrochemicals, plastics, are still derived from oil and natural gas. Well, all these industries continue to generate greenhouse CO2 and thus continue to contribute to global warming. So the point is, although solar cells are great at utilizing sunlight, they are simply not enough. In order to facilitate the transition to the sustainable economy of the future, we need a green process that also allows a direct production of chemicals, fuels, and plastics using sunlight. Imagine, for example, that cars can be run on a fuel that is derived solely from water and sunlight. A fuel that has no toxic byproducts and has a zero carbon footprint. That would be the aim. In our research group, a team of chemists, physicists, and material scientists approach this problem from a very fundamental perspective. Our research takes inspiration from natural photosynthesis, the process in which plants convert stable and abundant molecules, water and carbon dioxide, into valuable sugars and other chemicals using the energy of light photons. Well, we aim to design human-made materials that mimic what nature has been doing for billions of years. This is a big task. So, where do you start? How can we learn from nature? The first essential step to this point is to make sure that we understand how plants photosynthesize. And here, owing to the enormous scientific progress of the last 80 years, we have learned a great deal on the structure and functions of natural system. Just to give you a taste of it, let me show you its core. This is a leaf, a basic unit of photosynthesis. But is it? If we magnify its structure by a thousand times, we will enter the world of living cells. Inside the cells of the leaf, you see these green colored circles. These are chloroplasts the main photosynthetic unit of the plant on the microscopic level. But this is not enough. Only if we magnify the structure of the chloroplast by another thousand times, will you see the world of molecular machines responsible for the most important functions of photosynthesis. So here, on the scale of 10 to 20 nanometers, 
you will find the so-called photosystem too. And it is here, on this molecular scale, where photosynthesis truly begins. What you can see on this schematic reconstruction is a bunch of molecules, proteins, enzymes, lipids, cofactors. They are all intertwined to create this fascinating but highly complex biological system. So now, if you want to create an artificial system like that, you could of course think of replicating this entire structure one-to-one -one, using the tools of chemistry. But this would be too complex. Instead, why don't we try to get inspired by this structure and only create its minimalistic version that only contains the necessary functions? So far, we have learned that functions of natural photosynthetic systems can be downgraded to three main processes. One of them is called light absorption, the process that converts the energy of incoming light photons into a different form of energy, useful for the plant. These small molecules, chlorophylls, are responsible for this step. The second very important fu function, we call it catalytic, is in charge of the chemical conversion and generation of high-value sugars that sustain plant growth. To accomplish this step, nature employs a variety of bioorganic and bioinorganic molecules, such as this water oxidation cluster here. Well, the third function is to basically link these two main parts so that they can communicate effectively between each other. Well, now, after we understand the natural system and its main parts, we can think of designing its artificial version. To mimic the main functions of natural photosynthesis, we need a component able to absorb light, a component able to drive the chemical reaction, and the link between them. Well, it turns out that you can simplify this scheme even further, so you end up with such an integrated system in which these two major components are linked by design. Well, this final material is called a photocatalyst. This is our artificial copy of the natural photosynthetic system, as it can do both, absorb energy of light photons and drive the chemical conversion. All right, seems like a practical concept, but does this photocatalyst actually work? Let me demonstrate to you the feasibility of this approach by looking at the dream reaction of every chemist, water splitting. Water is a very simple substance made of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Still, splitting water into its constituents represents one of the most challenging processes. That's interesting. This is exactly the reaction that plants can do so well. And that is the reason why our atmosphere is full of breathable oxygen. But in addition to oxygen, if you split water, you also create hydrogen. A very simple gas that is not only an excellent energy storage molecule of the future, but is also a very important component of our chemical industry. So, if hydrogen can be produced using renewable resources, such as water and sunlight, we could contribute to the climate change issue significantly. But let me come back to the demonstration. Well, if you use compatible components, your catalyst and absorber, and design your photocatalyst just right, you can end up with a material that basically looks like a powder but is actually made of ultra-small particles. Well, in this experiment, I deposited this powder onto a piece of window glass. So I took this glass and put it in a container with water. As expected, nothing happens in the dark. But once my photocatalyst sees the light, the reaction begins. Light gets absorbed, the generated energy gets transferred to the catalytic component, which facilitates splitting of water molecules. As a result, we see bubbles of hydrogen gas emerging from the surface to be collected and used. This process is extremely simple. It does not require any sophisticated 
device or any additional energy input and results in the generation of a fuel from even wastewater and light. Well, achieving water splitting is a very important milestone using photocatalysts. But we need to dream bigger. The next level we want to achieve is to use these artificial systems to actually mimic the entire process of photosynthesis. Let me remind you, in photosynthesis, plants convert carbon dioxide into chemicals. So the ultimate aim here would be to take advantage of the excessive waste amount of CO2 in our atmosphere and to rather treat this CO2 as a valuable resource that can be converted into interesting chemical products using a photocatalyst. Well, this is the goal, and if we succeed, we can, for example, turn CO2 into a compound called ethylene, which is the main precursor to plastics. So, how can we get there? To allow for such a complex reaction, and such a selective product formation, we have to take a step back and reconsider the photocatalyst design. So you already know it is the catalytic component of the entire system that is responsible for the chemical conversion. So if we want to tune the product of our reaction, be it hydrogen, ethanol or acetylene, we need to make sure we can design the catalytic component in a predictable way. But, as of now, most of the contemporary photocatalysts are built using the catalytic components that are structurally extremely complex. So, achieving this control turns into a huge challenge. Well, in my research, I want to approach this problem by constructing a photocatalyst system that is based on structurally well-defined and thus tunable molecular catalysts. Why would it be of advantage? Well, in chemistry, it is only at the molecular scale, at the molecular level, where you can truly understand the catalytic process. So the use of this molecular catalyst will allow me to unravel this missing link between their structure and performance. This photocatalyst will be able to conduct even complex chemical conversions on demand. This is a very ambitious aim that we have, but I'm very confident we can actually achieve it. I have already started recruiting some excellent future PhD students to contribute to the latest stages of this project. All right, let me wrap it up. Natural photosynthesis uses sunlight to turn CO2 and water into a specific set of chemicals useful for the plant. Artificial photosynthesis mimics nature, but also allows to design a system for a specific desired chemical conversion. Well, if we can achieve that, and when we achieve that, we will not only have access to green hydrogen, we will also be able to produce carbon neutral plastics, fuels, and chemicals. So, Next time you see a plant, look closer. Think of the beauty and complexity of the biological photosynthetic machine that is inside it. And think of all the possibilities we will have once we learn how to tune it to our advantage. Thank you.